Why do I like One Piece? Well, if you haven't watched all of these videos, there's multiple reasons. There's the themes of found family, the greater plot of lost history, the single character development that comes with a lot of good angst. There's also the hot girls, the hot guys, the hot fish, the furries, the tits, cool pirates, bad pirates, ugly pirates, big fists that go punch, and so on and so forth. Every single thing about this series is basically monkey neuron activation. Giving me one piece is the equivalent of giving an ape a banana. Ook ook and all that. I can't help but get excited as I peel back the layers to see what's underneath. One Piece banana is so delicious. To put it simply, there are so many aspects of One Piece that can suck a person in. You can be in it for the fights, or you can be in it for the world, or in it for the characters, straw hats or not. This whole series is a collective clump of different story and worldly ideas that are wonderfully contained in a single series that viewers can pick and choose what they want to focus on. So what do I like? Why do I care? Multiple reasons for character is probably the main one. But I love One Piece for the fact it gives you all these characters, all these relationships and dynamics, and in doing so it gives you a puzzle. From time to time, from the beginning, you can easily put all these pieces together. Or Sometimes, and this is my favourite of times, you only get a few bits and pieces. There'll be a point where One Piece will give you a character, and they'll act in a certain way, speak in a certain way, or see someone or something in a certain way, and we don't know why. They're a mystery, and this can be on the nose or more subtle in nature. An on the nose example of this is Robin. She was interesting from the beginning, and her actions always lent themselves to bigger questions. Of course, we we didn't get all her pieces until Water 7, where we discover the story of her tragic past. A subtle one, in my opinion, would be Sanji. He always had this sacrificial nature that was a bit more intense than the average person, something that stemmed to even before Zeph. And the biggest question came from why he valued the lives of others above his own. But then, once we get to Whole Cake Island, we get that final piece. And the whole puzzle is completed in how we see Sanji and why he functions the way he does. I thought Sanji and Robin's stories were pretty magnificent in revealing their natures and their characters. I honestly didn't think it could be beat. However, if we factor in relationship and dynamic of characters, not just one, we get more puzzles to solve. And this is where the legend himself, Buggy D Clown, comes into play. <laughs> but before I honk that big red nose, I'm hitting you with a sponsor. While we cannot all be pirates in our current day and age, we can still be pirates online. And we can do that safely with Atlas VPN. If you're not a tech nerd like me and have no idea what a VPN is, a VPN makes it so all your internet searches, browsing and history is completely protected. It's sure to hide your IP address and it keeps you safe from spying, especially from the pesky FBI agent in your computer who's watching you look up Zoro's big fat boobies as we speak. But Atlas VPN isn't just a VPN, it also protects you from pop-up ads and malicious malware. It can also give you access to any country's version of Netflix or Disney Plus. I mentioned Disney Plus specifically because did you guys know that the entirety of Bleach is on Australian Disney Plus? And with Atlas you, yes you, can take advantage of Atlas's summer deal discount. You can get a three year subscription from $1.83 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. Even better than that, if you use my link in the description below, you get an 85% discount for premium subscription. Snatch that deal while it's hot. And thank you so much Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. I won't let you down. All right, it's clown time. Let me start by saying One Piece currently has the advantage of still being ongoing. Because of this, things currently being revealed tend to be more shocking the longer you've stuck with the story. A lot of angles factor into this, such as being spoiled for future plot points, reading faster to get to a certain arc more than an older viewer ever could, resulting in a lack of anticipation, the hype that surrounds the current chapters or episodes fading the further the story progresses, and anything else that can just disconnect a viewer from the media really. For example, a major reveal recently has been Dr. Vegapunk himself. I'm sure those who were around during the Kumabot times were desperate to know of Vegapunk's location and character. The very recent reveal has been built up for 17 years in the making. 
Ever since Vegapunk's name was officially revealed in Chapter 433 all the way back in 2006. However, as we further progress from the current Egghead arc, One Piece will get more readers, and this build-up will become less significant to them. Now that's not to say there is no significance in the showing of Vegapunk, because you still have to read over 600 chapters from the original Vegapunk mention to get to him. But what I'm saying is, the impact of the timing works to One Piece's advantage of being a still ongoing series. So why am I saying all of this? Why does the puzzle of character and relationship, impact of plot reveal and the build-up of this legendary series matter? Because I believe One Piece's biggest build-up and one of the biggest puzzle pieces ever, has been given to us just recently, with the puzzle piece in question handed to us in the form of Buggy. Not just Buggy, but Buggy and Shanks specifically. Buggy has always been an interesting character and has always been a major anomaly in my opinion. When we meet Buggy, the chapters are still in the single digits, and he's just this weird looking clown who seems to enjoy terrorizing this little East Blue town. People were injured, but maybe no one died? I choose to believe Buggy believes in my well-being. He's the people's pirate to me. Not even Luffy takes Buggy seriously, because why would you? This guy is a literal clown. He's a pretty good breakout pirate for how damn crazy this One Piece world is. Or at least, Luffy didn't take him seriously until he mentioned Shanks. <laughs> 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 Shanks is a mystery in itself, someone we certainly do not have all the pieces for, but it's this passing comment a lot of people focused in on, and for good reason. Buggy not only knew of Shanks, seemingly personally, but he was on the same boat as Shanks. At the current time, this looked to be nothing special, it's just a random boat, so who cares? But there's obviously more here we are meant to focus on, and not only is Buggy's affiliation with Shanks something that connects him to Luffy, but the permanent stitches now forever on Luffy's hat are a constant reminder, a constant one, that Buggy exists in this world. And admittedly, I was not someone who focused on Buggy at first, but a lot of people had him always in the backs of their minds, because what part does Buggy possibly have to play in all of this? Is his connection with Shanks really that they were just on the same boat years ago? Does Buggy's hate only stem from the fact Shanks accidentally made Buggy eat a devil fruit. And so, we have been given a piece of Buggy's puzzle. And this is where the questions come pouring in as the Shanks and Buggy relationship has been established. I think a key thing to take from Buggy's introduction is, not only was he unnerved by Luffy having Shanks's hat, but he was extremely pissed off at Luffy announcing he'll be the next Pirate King. The only thing is, Buggy doesn't say he'll be the next Pirate King instead. Not in the way Kaido's crew does for Kaido, but just says the treasure will be his instead. After Luffy declares this, Buggy then says Luffy reminds him of a young Shanks. It's not until hundreds of chapters later, chapter 434 to be exact, that we find out the ship Shanks and Buggy were on wasn't just any ship but was Roger's ship itself. This is information Buggy and Shanks both conveniently left out when talking to Luffy. But what I always found interesting was the tiny flashback we receive when Shanks is talking about and thinking of Buggy. Shanks tells us they parted on the day of Roger's execution, and the flashback we get is Shanks asking Buggy to be on his crew, while Buggy tells him he'll never work under him. <laughs> ロータウンで別れてそれっきりだ。俺と一緒に来いよ、バギー。おめえの部下なんざ真っ平だぜ、バギー。風の噂でまだ海賊をやってると聞いた。
According to Shanks, they've never seen each other since Roger's execution. But this never really added up to me. In fact, I feel a few ways about Shanks, but it was at this point Buggy and his relationship with Shanks really began to interest me. Because from the story Buggy had given us, it just didn't make sense. Buggy told us that, while on the same ship, Shanks made him eat a devil fruit. Due to eating the devil fruit, Buggy couldn't swim, and therefore couldn't find this great treasure. So he and Shanks became mortal enemies. From Shanks' demeanor upon talking about Buggy, they don't really feel like enemies. And once they see each other again, for the first time in years, there is absolutely nothing malicious going on here. In fact, they bicker like normal, an incredibly normal Buggy reaction if I've ever seen one. Buggy has never really been evil per se, just a little bit off. But for someone who claimed Shanks as his mortal enemy, this is still a weird reaction to have when seeing each other again. Anyways, the reaction upon meeting aside, what did I find so weird about this? It's the fact the timeline didn't make sense. Apparently, Buggy hated Shanks once eating the devil fruit, but apparently, they parted permanently at Roger's execution. This leaves a few days, to a few weeks, to a few years between the devil fruit scenario and their eventual parting. So my loud little brain began racing at this because if this is the case and they actually split up at Roger's execution, that means Shanks and Buggy shared many more days together being partners in crime way after the Devil Fruit. To begin with, I consider this as something Oda may have forgotten about, but rule one of being into One Piece is Oda never forgets, and he is a fantastic writer in that regard. This is a huge piece of Buggy that we have been given, because this means Buggy lied about why he hates Shanks, or at least partially lied. I have no doubt he's angry at eating the devil fruit, but obviously he wasn't angry enough to up and leave Shanks. But at this point, we were just being teased. There still wasn't really enough here, and Buggy was still a bit of a mysterious character at this point in terms of his ambitions and his dreams. It's very easy to believe Shanks actually did nothing and Buggy is just being Buggy, but it comes back into question again as we get to Wano, because in Wano, we get a very large, very generous flashback regarding the Roger Pirates, all through Odin's eyes. We discover Buggy and Shanks weren't just on Roger's crew, but they'd been there since birth. These two were essentially raised by Roger and Rayleigh, and it makes more sense as to why Buggy was so happy to hear Rayleigh was still alive in Sabodi. This guy may as well be his dad, and after Roger's execution, the relief at hearing that Rayleigh is still around is no doubt comforting for Buggy. But this whole flashback Flashback adds a whole new layer to Shanks and Buggy. They were far more than just crewmates on Roger's ship. Their relationship had honestly been downplayed from the beginning, and I have no doubt Buggy and Shanks know each other better than anyone else does. In fact, it seems Shanks would have done anything for Buggy, and Buggy would have done anything back. Even though they were so close to finding the One Piece with Roger, Buggy fell sick only a few islands beforehand. Their closeness and relationship is cemented as Shanks tells the crew he'll leave with Buggy, and and the Roger pirates drop them off to continue the One Piece search without them. Now, just think about that. Really, really think about that. When they were younger, Shanks and Buggy were both a hair away from discovering the One Piece as Roger's crew, but they gave it up. More importantly, Shanks gave up the One Piece for Buggy, because he wanted to make sure Buggy was okay. Shanks put the glory of this discovery and the Pirate King crew after Buggy, and no doubt Buggy felt he owed Shanks a great debt after that, because these two continued to stick together. We are seeing just how strong of a relationship these two had, as friends or brothers or partners or anything else you want to call it. Buggy was an important part of Shanks's life, as Shanks was in Buggy's, and once again, Again, we see the execution scene. Once again, we see Buggy suddenly changing his mind about Shanks. We see Shanks begging Buggy to stay as Buggy absolutely refuses to stick with him. We now have more context on their relationship, of their eventual parting and why this meant so much. But once more, 
it doesn't make sense. This is no longer a passing scene. This is a big, obvious question Oda has presented us in terms of Shanks and Buggy's characters. What the hell happened on this day? at this time that Buggy abandoned Shanks, refusing to see him again. Oda has given us a huge hole in this puzzle that he wants us to look at, something he wants us to examine, and examine I did. To this day I still have no idea how I feel about Shanks, but the feeling from this wasn't good. Buggy clearly cared very heavily for Shanks, and in my opinion, Shanks must have done something insane for Buggy to just leave him. But I think the most interesting part is Shanks still wanted Buggy with him. He didn't want to leave Buggy in any sense, so it was obviously something Shanks had done specifically. I cannot tell you how much this genuinely plagued me, because in all honesty, I am not a theory person. I don't think I have the head for that. Instead, I was trying to understand what could make Buggy so angry, but for the life of me I couldn't find anything in the story that would put this all together, until after years and years of building up this dynamic between Shanks and Buggy, Oda releases chapter 1082, and we finally get the missing puzzle piece. We get the one piece, if you will. Sorry. In all seriousness, the answer we got was so much more emotional than I thought it was going to be. And this single chapter is such a prime example of why I love this series so much. This chapter opens with the Marines talking about whatever Marine stuff they're doing, but they don't matter for the context of this video, so whatever. What matters is the Cross Guild, but specifically what matters is Buggy's stupid little head hanging on that hook. As Crocodile and Mihawk discuss their plans regarding the Marines, Buggy begins to think, this is wrong. This isn't how I wanted my life to go. At first, it feels like a throwaway haha line, but then it keeps going. Now, Buggy is a cowardly character. He's a pirate who always manages to fail upwards, and everything he says is akin to that of a lie or a trick. Overall, Buggy doesn't tend to say anything with his whole chest or heart. From the time we've known him, he never has. Hell, even his time skip design is a brilliant play on how his bark is bigger than his bite. His huge, ridiculous outfit shows him to be a huge man on stage, when he's really just this tiny, scared clown behind the curtain. And that's why, as Buggy begins to think of what he wants, begins to talk back to Mihawk and Crocodile, it's shocking. He yells at them, how can you call yourselves pirates with schemes like that? Way back when, what did you guys want to be? It feels like in these lines, Buggy is regretting his life choices. He's regretting the schemes he played out to be where he is. And then we finally, finally get to the part that actually makes me tear up. Buggy talks about Shanks. And he says, When I sailed with Shanks, he shone so brightly with potential. I knew I couldn't measure up, so I let go of my real dream. And as we get to the day of Roger's execution, we finally get the whole conversation between Shanks and Buggy. And in a shocking term of events, Buggy was actually the one supporting Shanks in reaching Laugh Tale. He was the one wanting Shanks to be the next King of the Pirates, until Shanks backs down on it, and says he's changed his mind on going for the One Piece. And Buggy calls him a coward. Buggy the coward calls Shanks a coward. But it's not out of any real anger, or at least not from the way I read it. From here, we go back to present day Buggy making a speech about the dreams that led everyone to the sea. This man crying as he says to reject the daunting reality so everyone can reach out for what they desire most. All in all, he's telling everyone to push down that cowardly urge and chase the dreams that lit the pirate age to life in the first place. It's on par with something Roger would say, and I have no doubt Roger would be proud of him for this, which especially brings a tear to my eye. From every Everything this chapter showed us, 
it broke my heart. Because Shanks honestly broke Buggy's heart. It now makes sense that, from the beginning, Buggy didn't say he'd be the next King of the Pirates for a reason. It makes sense why Luffy's declaration of becoming the next King pissed him off so much. And it makes sense why Buggy said Luffy reminds him of Shanks. Because when they were young, Shanks shines so brightly Buggy abandoned his dream. But this is just not abandoning dreams, this is Buggy looking up to and believing in Shanks with all his heart. Since they were kids, Buggy wanted to follow Shanks. Would have worked under him to make Shanks the next King of Pirates. But on the day of Roger's execution, Shanks froze. And everything Buggy sacrificed for Shanks meant nothing. The way I'm seeing this is, imagine if Luffy were in this situation. Imagine if, one day, something shook Luffy up so bad, he said he no longer wanted to aim for the One Piece. Or, he just wanted to put it on hold. Imagine if Luffy lost that sheer force of will that makes him so intoxicating, and makes the Straw Hats believe in him with their lives and their dreams. Buggy put his dream on Shanks. He believed in his future Pirate King with all he had. And suddenly, for a while, Shanks abandoned it. So of course Buggy would call him a coward. Of course Buggy wouldn't want to join him. Of course he would never want to see Shanks again. Buggy witnessed Shanks's will shake. For a moment he saw the bright light that he followed dim. And it tore Buggy apart. After all these years, we have been given the final piece for why Shanks and Buggy's relationship was torn in two. And it was tragic. It took years later for Buggy to realise what he really wanted. And through snot and tears, he yells, I want to be King of the Pirates. Because now that he's seen Shanks on the move, it sparked a new light in him. And I am so desperate to see these two meet again. Because I can't imagine what it'll be like. The question is if Buggy is really aiming to be the king. Or if he still has this desire to see Shanks sitting on the throne. Like he was so sure Shanks would all those years ago. And this is why I love One Piece so damn much. I love the fact a single chapter, a single piece, can change the way I see an entire character. I was never sure how I felt about Buggy. I liked him, yet I always saw him as a joke. But now, with this information we've been given, with seeing how Buggy was hurt at Shanks giving up on his dream, even if just for a time, my whole perspective has changed. I love Buggy now, but not only do I love him, I feel bad for him. I now want to see Buggy succeed, and not as a joke, but genuinely from my heart I am rooting for Buggy. One Piece is so masterful at only ever giving us just enough to really tease us. Just to flip us on our heads and crush us from the inside with any new revelations presented to us. Suffice to say, it fucked me up. And I don't think I will ever be normal again after this. Thank you so much, Oda. Now, with the mystery of Buggy solved, we have two more questions left regarding Shanks. Those questions being why he gave up when he did and why he's decided to move when he has. I'm sure Buggy wants to know this as well. And I personally cannot wait until we're given these two final pieces to put Shanks together. So until then, my ass will be reading. And with that, Thanks for watching. I hope the Buggy fans like this one. If you're watching this as a Buggy fan, please tell me what the new chapters did to you and if it damaged you critically as much as it did me. Also, if there's any new character that just flipped completely for you due to new plot points, let me know that as well. I always love reading the comments you guys leave. Just a quick reminder that I do have a Patreon and if you would like to support me there, I'd really, really, really appreciate it. However, I know not everyone can support me in that way and just watching and sharing these videos does more than you can imagine for me. If there's anything you'd like to see me cover, One Piece or otherwise, please let me know. And I'll see you in whatever I make next. See ya!